Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Morning Prayer. But the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Let's be the Lord our God by whose grace we have to die. Let us be His Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Let us be the Spirit of God in whom is our hope and our joy. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your olive Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen The sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let all worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen.
We bring before the Lord that which displeases him. And we seek his forgiveness and his mercy. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins and all that know. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Set us free from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 25 To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness, for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him, and will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have pity on me, for I am left alone and in misery. The sorrows of my heart have increased. Bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear violent hatred against me. Protect my life and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have trusted in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
A reading from the Word of God written in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9 through 14. Moses commands obedience. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children, how you once stood before the Lord your God at Horeb when the Lord said to me, Assemble the people for me, and I will let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me as long as they live on the earth, and may teach their children so. You approached and stood at the foot of the mountain while the mountain was blazing up to the very heavens, shrouded in dark clouds. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, which he charged you to observe that is, the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two stone tablets. And the Lord charged me at that time to teach you statutes and ordinances for you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy. Here ends the reading. The Song of Moses I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumph. The horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord has become my strength and my refuge. The Lord himself has become my savior. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord himself is a mighty warrior. The Lord, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Holy, awesome, worker of wonders. In steadfast love, you led your people. You guided your redeemed with your great strength. You brought them in safety to your holy place and planted them firm on your own mountain. You brought them into your own house. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 14, beginning at verse 25 through verse 35. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot 
be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can be my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. They throw it away. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. This is the word of the Lord.
Challenge. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 reads, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support to the weak, be patient toward all men. That's the King James Version. The NRSV reads, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, to admonish the idlers, and encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. The Apostle Paul presents in this verse a pastoral challenge. By pastoral, I refer especially, but not exclusively, to those of us who carry the official title of pastor. Rather, by pastoral, I refer to the duty of care we all carry. We're all called to share with each other. Husband to wives, wives to husbands. Parents to children and children to parents. Bosses to workers and workers to bosses and friends to each other. By challenge, I refer to that which obstructs our ability and even our desire to consistently maintain a Christian attitude in difficult relationships. We are always to be caring and considerate in our attitude towards one another, even when the other person may make this difficult. So, verse 14 of 1 Thessalonians 5 presents us with three types of attitudes we may encounter from others. The King James Version identifies them as the unruly, the feeble-minded, and the weak. The New Revised Standard Version calls them the idlers, the faint-hearted, and the weak. The pastoral challenge is to determine the difference between these attitudes and to apply the appropriate pastoral care. The unruly or idle needs to be warned or admonished. The feeble-minded or faint-hearted needs to be comforted and encouraged. And the weak needs our support, our help. However, without discernment, we can mistakenly apply the wrong pastoral care to each situation. The Greek word translated unruly in the King James Version and an idle in the New Revised Standard Version literally means out of line, or out of order, or out of step, such as a soldier marching out of step with the ranks. This soldier is considered undisciplined. Thus, the unruly of the church are those who do not keep in step with Christian behavior, therefore considered disruptive, or the unruly may be those who do not act with urgency with regard to the work of God. Lazy, therefore considered idle. Or the unruly may be those who are naturally rebellious to the authority of the church, just to be contrarian, therefore considered disorderly. The Apostle Paul recommended that to the truly unruly person ought to be warned, that is, admonished, strongly cautioned, reprimanded. 
the word literally means to put in mind or to be made mindful of their behavior, of its effects and of its consequences. Oftentimes, however, we see a brother or sister acting in a seemingly disorderly fashion in a way that is not in keeping with Christian behavior. And without the aid of holy discernment, we immediately deem them unruly and begin to apply a stern warning to them. However, if this brother or sister was in fact not being unruly, our uninformed pastoral care could result in causing more harm than good. So, maybe your partner, friend, co-worker, subordinate, or even superior acted out of line. But not because he or she was being unruly, but rather because he or she was suffering from a case of feeble-mindedness. The Greek word translated feeble-minded or faint-hearted literally means small soul or little heart. In other words, this person may be afraid or suffering from insecurities such that they lack the inner courage to do what is right for fear of some kind of loss. Perhaps protecting their fragile ego or some other dear possession. This person feels somehow threatened even by situations or persons that they ought not to feel threatened by. This person does not have what it takes to be magnanimous, big hearted. They do not have a big heart. They have a small mind. They think little of themselves and of their ability to accomplish what is required. Such a person does not need a stern talking to, but a personal encouragement. Personalized encouragement. They need to be made to believe that they are able and that they are capable. They need to understand that they have what it takes. They need to be properly esteemed, not to be flattered or lauded with credentials that do not match their actual capabilities. In fact, empowering them too soon or inappropriately can hurt their self-concept and their self-efficacy. They rather need to be shown their real value, their real gifts. They need to be trained and given the opportunity to shine in their area, not to be reprimanded. Again, the person originally deemed delinquent may not be suffering from any form of fear, but instead they may be incapable because of some actual weakness or inability, more particularly physical or physiological in terms of incapacity. It is not that they are incompetent, it is more that they are incapable, perhaps even sick. It is not that they may not know how or know what needs to be done or know what their problem is, but just that it is not within their talents or abilities to do better. Somehow, many of us end up with either the jobs that we cannot do effectively or something may have happened to us along the way that may have incapacitated us. You were doing well all the time. So as a person who is suffering, my advice is this. In this case, resign or open, open yourself to receiving help. Persons looking on, however, unaware of the person's weaknesses, may criticize them for their incompetence or chastise them for being unruly, 
when I said they need to be aided. The weak needs our support. They need our backing. They need our help. Moses had Aaron. David had Jonathan. Who is your help? And who do you help? Nevertheless, the pastoral challenge still remains. How do we overcome the challenge of discerning the difference between the unruly, the faint-hearted, and the weak? It is so easy to take things personally and in our impatience apply the wrong pastoral care. I asked a former pastor of mine, good friend, and he reached out to me and told me that over his 50 years of pastoral service, he has learned to rely on the help of the Holy Spirit for this task. The spirit of discernment. This is a crucial spiritual gift for a pastor. Otherwise, Seek spiritual advice from those who have the gift. However, we all share in the same spirit. And in the end, the Apostle Paul advised that we should be patient with them all. Yes, even with the unruly. So, in conclusion, this is what I advise. First, take the time to recall the situation. Right now, a situation that requires the application of pastoral care. Then, do not take the situation personally. Next, call upon the spirit of discernment. And finally, patiently apply the appropriate pastoral care. Wives to husbands, husbands to wives, children to parents, parents to the children, bosses to subordinates, pastors to congregation. May God's grace, and may God's wisdom, and may God's strength be upon us at this time. In the name of Jesus. the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. The Suffragist Suffragist Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. The Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. The Collect Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory O father who with the son and the holy spirit live and reign one god forever and ever amen heavenly father we thank you for the love you have shed abroad in our hearts and for the grace that you have given us through your holy spirit to accomplish that for which you have asked us that we love one another and that we care for each other as you have loved us we pray for your church's mission in this world, the duty of care that you have assigned to us. May our hearts fully desire to do your will. May we not be lazy, idle, or indiscipline in your service, but towards each other and towards the message of the gospel, may we be fully zealous. We acknowledge that this message it is wrapped up in the way we care for each other. We pray for our leadership of the church. We pray, we pray especially for our bishop, the right Reverend Paul Berkeley. Grant him renewed vision and grace to lead your church. We pray for our diocese, the diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, and for its various parishes. We pray especially for all parish, the parishes in Mary Takarigua and for its clergy and laity. May you bless our efforts of pleasing you in our service of worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service that at an evening we may again give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.